Hello fellow viewers, I'm Galamu. I just wish to share with you my testimony of what God did to me last year, July 2017. Alright, it all happened on a Wednesday when I left work on the 5th of July. As I was going back to the house, I left work at past 8 in the night. Reasons being I had a report to do and that was the deadline. I just had to submit on that day. So when I left work at that at that hour, uh, I got to a roundabout where we normally take taxis to home. When I got there, there were many people around. The place was busy, it was funky. So I finally got a taxi. But it was rather unfortunate for me that the taxi that I got, I entered, the wrong guys were inside the taxi. Thieves, I entered and I came in contact with thieves without knowing. So when we continued, since we were just four of us inside the taxi, the, the, the fifth person entered and now sat by me. So we're now five of us in the vehicle. As we continued the journey, at one point, after about 10 minutes, one of the guys, the last person who entered along the line, removed a gun. He just switched off the light in the vehicle, removed the gun, and I pointed it at my leg. He was like, I should, that I should say, I should talk, I should be quiet. I was like, but how? How can I be quiet? I said, what is it? They said, they said just shut up and try to listen. I said, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I shouted that God should help me. But God works in ways that we cannot see. I thought I was going, he was just going to appear at that time and then deliver me from the hands of, this, of those people. But it was rather unfortunate that it had to take time. So after some time, I said, Jesus, please help me. But nothing happened. I said, Jesus, please. The guns are only like trying to harm me that do this, do that. So when we got now, we passed now through my quarter. I was held like this. I was held, I was held like this. Then the gun was on my leg. So they're like, I should shut up. I could not shout. I could not make any moves. So when we continued around my quarter, they went now inside. They went to one road. There's a new road, North Station. So when we got there, they were like, I should talk. That they heard that I work in the microfinance and they want, to, they want money from the microfinance where I work. So they were like, I'm the one who controls everything, the money. I was like, but how can one person be controlling a whole bank? I said, no. They said, shut up. If you don't speak the truth, we are going to kill you. So I gave them a rough estimate of what I counted on that day. So they said, okay, if they go and that's not the amount, they're going to kill me. I said, I'm speaking the truth. So when they, then the, the driver was like, if she does not want to talk, we are going to, <laughs> we're just going to kill her. So he made some fake calls. I'm sure they were fake calls. That they should prepare the robes and then that they're coming with the girl. So we got now, as we're now going to the place, they had to, they, they covered my face with the cloth and they had to put my head down. So I will not even see the direction. So when we got now to the to the bush, I just discovered I was in the bush. It was a dark environment. I was in the bush. So I removed the ropes and then they tied my hands and my legs. And when they tied my hands and my legs, they took my bag, removed the money. I had 50,000 on me. They removed the 50,000 francs. They took my phone. They took the keys, the bunch of keys I had. So they were like asking the, the rooms, the key to the various offices. So when I explained to them, it was like, they said, okay, if she's speaking the truth, fine. So they took the key and they went with it. So when they went with it, now finally to the enterprise, I was now left with two people. Because there were four of them. Two of them went to the bank, while two others stayed with me. They were taking care of me, so I could not run. So when they started, so I stayed with the two. Why with the two? I was trying to advise them. I told them that because I knew that I was already gone, that they were going to kill me. So I was like, but they were like, what they have done now, God is going to forgive them after. But I said, but it's not correct. Why are you taking God for granted? If you do something today and you confess tomorrow, the same thing, and then you're confessing one and the same thing all over. It doesn't make sense. So they were like, no, they, they will confess and God is going to forgive them. So I was like, okay. I just started advising them. I said, okay, but if you have a sister that is like me and this kind of thing happens to the person, how are you going to take it? So they were like, they're, they're just going to take it anyhow. So just, then one guy, I started advising them. So one of them now said, I should shut up. He started touching him, he started to shut up. So I was now quiet. So before then, one of them now try, was trying to uplift my dress. So I was like, I said, God, please help me. I've always preserved myself. Please just help me on this. So after now, he removed his hand. He was like, he's sorry. He was like, you're a beautiful girl, all those kind of things. So I was like, maybe this guy wants to rape me. Then after he stopped it, he said that he's sorry after praying. So before then, where, why everything was going on, I had so many cr uh, thoughts crossing my mind. I was like, I believe that God is with me. I remember the story of Daniel in the lion's den, where God delivered Daniel from the den of lions. 
So I was like, God, I'm into that. I'm into that shit now. I just want you to deliver me, and I believe that you're going to deliver me. And I looked up to the hills. I was like, God, I looked up to the hills from where my help comes from. I believe that it comes from you. After saying all the prayers within me and everything, after some time, those two guys said I should forgive them. That I'm sorry. So we stayed there for some time. It was from that past eight till about four a.m. in the morning. The other two that went to the bank came back and they said that, that they did not succeed. That was difficult for them. That one of their men that was coming from Santa had an accident along the line and he could not meet up with them at the bank. So finally, they did not succeed in taking the money from the bank. And when they came out, they told me that they had not succeeded. That I should forgive them, that they are sorry. They equally begged for forgiveness. So I was so happy that God delivered me from the hands of these armed robbers. Those guys did not rape me. They did not kill me and nothing, nothing. Rather, they instead beg for forgiveness. So this is my testimony. I just pray that it's going to minister to you. It's going to make meaning in your life. God help me. He's never late. He's always on time. That was the right time for God to rescue me. Maybe I wanted him to act instantly at the time that those guys arrested me. Maybe he would have stopped them. He has the power to do so. But he wanted me to see him in another level. So that is it. I'll just pray that God is going to help you to, to trust in him no matter what. Wait on him at the right time. He's going to he's going to answer you. There's, then when we continue from there, they finally came and dropped me around my quarter. They gave me 1,000 francs. I should take care. I should take off. I should manage it. So I left from there. And the following day, the following day, then they gave my phone. They said, take your phone. This is a phone. They gave back my phone to me. That should take back my phone. They don't need my phone. Then they gave me 1,000 francs. And then they went with a bunch of keys. So after that, now the following morning, I got home at past four. There was nobody in the house. I was just there with my kid brother. So he was, I was just crying. I called my director. I explained everything to him. So they told, the following morning, my dad told me to go to the police station and write a statement. At six, I'm not yet taking a bath. I was still dirty. And I went out to the police station. I wrote my statement. After writing my statement, I went back to the office to see what had happened. But they called me to come back to the office, to the police station. When I got there, they were like, I'm an accomplice that I'm the one who arranged with these guys, that they cannot believe that these guys do not harm me, there's no rape me, they not kill me. That baby is my boyfriend or something. I was like, it's God that saved me. I don't know what to say. It's only God that saved me. They stayed with me there for long. They were turning up and down that I'm going to sleep at the police station because I have a hand in it. I told them it's only that God alone saved me. I don't have any other thing to say. So at the end of the day, they, they, they had to release me at 8, 8 p.m. in the night. So from the previous 8 to that 8 p.m. in the night, that's when I got home now finally, and I took my bath. So I just want to thank God for what he did. It's a miracle. We hear of people being raped, kidnapped, and all those kind of things. But God saved me from the hands of these arm robbers. And I just want to share with you, I just pray that God is going to minister to you. That if you have been trusting him, keep on trusting him. He does not fail and you will never fail. God bless you.